Right, American raccoons. Uh, I don't know whether this is what I'm thinking of in my head. I'm not sure whether this is what I'm thinking of in my head exactly. But that animal looks like a rat or a mouse. Right? A bit bigger, obviously. Bigger than a mouse. But it looks like that. It rolls like that. <laughs> it, and it's scary. It bites people, right? Maybe I'm wrong in all this, things, but obviously I'm just learning for the first time. But I've, I've heard it. I've heard, raccoons, yeah. Yeah, they're not, they're wild animals, right? They're small, obviously, so they're not really that scary, but they're wild. Anyway, uh, this should be fun. Let's get right into it. Here's a clue for today's video. Favourite pastimes include wandering the streets at night, chewing fences, and rummaging through garbage. This could definitely describe Chainsaw Jim. But it can also describe an animal that you won't find in Britain. An animal that's native to the continent of North America. I'm talking about raccoons. I'm Lawrence Brown and this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Before moving to the United States, I knew very little about raccoons. And actually, they remain slightly elusive even now, which is why I've decided to make a video all about them. <laughs> Throughout the next several minutes, I'll be answering questions like, Are raccoons friendly? Where can they be found? I don't think and are so. they as much a nuisance as Americans have led me to believe? This yeah, year, my subscribers like have heard me give the lowdown on other mysterious American creatures like coyotes, bald eagles, and Chicagoans. Oh, so I should for check those out, of I you not yet subscribed to the channel... I should definitely check out that bald eagle video. I should definitely check it out. I think the bald eagle is like the symbol of the United States, you know. So, that should be interesting. Let's take a look at an animal that the Quincy Gazette once called a canine rodent. The Quincy Gazette. A fictional newspaper that I invented for the purposes of... Like I said, it's like a rat. So, a rodent. And it's not... So, basically, a canine rodent. That is... That is scary. That is a very bad mixture. It's a very bad combo. It's a really, really bad combo. A canine rodent. Ew. Of exposition has clearly been using AI to write its articles because the raccoon is neither a canine nor a rodent. In fact, it's a member of the Procyonid family, which also includes ringtails, alingos, okay. and other giant rat impersonators. In addition to rat its comically bushy tail, it has remarkably dexterous paws, allowing it to grip anything from bin lids to discarded food. I mean, the defining look cute, feature yeah. is actually how it got its name. You see, the English word raccoon comes from the Algonquin word arakun, meaning he scratches with with his hands. Furthermore, some indigenous tribes, like the Abenaki people of the north. Oh, just remembering now, in Mavu, uh, uh, that character in Mavu, his name is Raccoon, right? Yeah. What is his, what is his other name? Uh, first, the other name that he is, but he's a raccoon, and he's so troublesome. So I'm, 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 I'm assuming real life raccoons are also troublesome as well. Eastern woods believed raccoons to be a lower level trickster spirit capable of the mischievous. Of course, their behavior. I mean, they look cute. I would like to have it in my house. New England. Like bald eagles and coyotes, raccoons can be found in 49 of the 50 US states, with the only exception being Alaska. But raccoons also show up in Central America. Like I said, Alaska is not really a US state. So, lots of characteristics that mainland United States would have, Alaska would not have. So, I mean. Mexico and southern Canada. Raccoons can be found in 49 of the 50 US states, with the only exception being Alaska. <coughs> but raccoons also show up in Central America, Mexico, and southern Canada. Yet beyond these borders, you won't find them anywhere else in the world. At least wow. that was true until the 20th century. Okay. At that time, North American raccoons ended up in three other regions. The fact that all three had at some point been major enemies of the United States is purely coincidental, I think. Not really. During the late 1920s, <laughs> various raccoons groups were introduced to the Soviet Union, and it wasn't always a good thing. Many of these raccoon groups faced extirpation, which is when a species goes extinct in one particular region, but not in others. However, to this very day, raccoons do still persist in southwest Russia, where people often keep them as pets. And mm. then there's the case of Germany. I would love that in 1945, well. not only would the country lose another world war, but they'd soon be stuck with the largest raccoon population outside of North America. 25 imported raccoons escaped from a fur farm in the German German state of Brandenburg after the farm was bombed in an air raid. And this partly Ooh. led to a post-war baby boom of raccoons in not just Deutschland, but all of the countries surrounding wow. it. In Germany today, they number... That's, that's a very interesting history. And that, was, and, that was, and that crossed my mind when he first said that, that um, for some reason, the countries that have raccoons outside of North America 
actually had conflicts against the United States. So I was like, okay, that could explain it. I was actually thinking, so this actually really, really makes real sense. That's a nice story. And this partly led to a post-war baby boom of raccoons in not just Deutschland, but all of the countries surrounding it. In Germany wow. today, they number exactly 1.5 million, approximately. And then, there's Japan. While Japan had long been home to an unrelated raccoon dog called a tanuki, the country had never been inhabited by North American raccoons until mm -hmm. the late 70s. Obviously. At this time, a phenomenon occurred in which hundreds of Japanese families suddenly began importing raccoons as oh. pets. The cause of this phenomenon? TV show. The anime series Araiga Marosukaru, based on the American book and Disney film Rascal, was such a huge hit in Japan that fans wanted the real thing, and they got their way with the importation of thousands of North American raccoons. 30 they, years they later, with cute. raccoons now ask. part of the Japanese... I'm not going to lie, like, they don't look wild to me. I know some... I've, I've been hearing that rumor that they are wild um, from Americans online. Are they really wild? I mean, this looks... This looks like Potential pets to me. He's wilderness. Seriously. The animal was officially identified as an invasive species. So today, the global range of North American raccoons looks like this. But in Britain, which is quite decidedly none of these countries, there are no raccoons. Which might lead you to ask, Lawrence, had you even heard of raccoons before moving to the United States? And the answer to that question is yes. As a child growing up in Britain, my only insight into the curious world of the United States came in the form of entertainment. And one American film that occupied much of my time in 1988 was 1985's Back to the Future. You may remember that when Marty goes back in time to 1955, he finds himself in the childhood home of his mom, Lorraine. What's that got to do with raccoons, Lawrence? Oh, nothing. Just that Lorraine's little brother is wearing a dead raccoon on his head. <laughs> <laughs> now, as odd as that seemed at the time, I later learned that these so-called coonskin caps, made from actual raccoon fur, were especially popular among boys of the 1950s. And not just in the United States, the caps briefly reached the shores of Britain, where Davy Crockett, the American TV show that popularised them, was a huge hit. More than 30 years later, so too was another raccoon-themed phenomenon. Around the time I discovered Back to the Future, Nintendo released the greatest platform video game ever made, Super Mario Bros. 3. I can't swear on it, but it's probable that this game introduced me to the word raccoon, for it was on that most Japanese of video games that Mario could turn into raccoon Mario. Proof that by then Japan was well into its raccoon era. And remember <coughs> earlier when I said that Japan had long been home to an unrelated raccoon dog called a tanuki? The game also featured a tanuki suit for good measure. It was as if that three year period inherently contained some sort of cosmic significance. Almost as if it were the junction point of all my favourite raccoon references. And then I didn't think about them again for 20 more years. 20 years was just enough time to outgrow my childhood wardrobe. Nonetheless, Super Mario 3 had had a profound effect on my perception of raccoons. The year I moved to the United States, I suddenly remembered that everybody <laughs> worshipped the animal for its magnificent ability to hover. But this was not the vibe I got from most Americans. A freaking raccoon got in the trash again. I keep finding them in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere that I went, nobody seemed to like raccoons. In fact, uh, I've yet to meet an American funny. who does. That's why what I'm about to tell you might come as quite a shock. I have never actually seen one. A raccoon, not an American. I mean, all right, I have seen dead raccoons, which is a sadly common sight on Midwestern roads. Actually, wow. it's estimated that the number of raccoons killed by motor vehicles in the US each year could be as high as 15 million. That seems made up. Either way, I've never Ooh. seen a live one in the wild. Except for me, of course. Now, this is by no means the experience of most Midwesterners. Perhaps the places I've lived in just had very few raccoons within a mm. square mile radius. But it is indicative of the sensibilities of raccoons, and their relative elusiveness might be attributed to two things. Number one, they are largely nocturnal, meaning those of us who can't be asked to leave the house after 8pm <laughs> have a reduced chance of seeing them. And number two, they are known to avoid humans, preferring instead to burrow in our waste. In a move one might expect of giant rats, raccoons have a well well earned reputation for ransacking people's trash cans in search of food. This is compounded by the fact that as a highly adaptable animal, many of them show up in cities and suburbs. And I get all of that. I just wish that Americans had been more honest about something. I'm How is you. it that in 2024, I'm only just learning that raccoons can f 
f***ing climb trees. Nothing can prepare me for this revelation, not even Mario 3 or vodka. In fact, something that I only learned this week is that raccoons are surprisingly proficient climbers in general. And, in addition to cosplaying as Ewoks, this prowess makes it easier for them to access not just America's trash cans, but its attics and other parts of houses. I keep finding them in the toilet. Now, I'm not saying it's time for America to reevaluate its attitudes towards raccoons. After all, they do sometimes still attack us. This is especially true if the raccoon harbors babies, rabies, or Wendy's. Oh, oh I am yeah. saying Ah, uh, now I'm remembering now. This is where the scary part is. The rabies. Yeah, I think I've always been hearing that rabies, like, that they carry lots of rabies, you know. That, that's what I always, okay. I think that was, I think, I think, it, I think it wasn't about their biting. I think it was about their rabies. I think I, I was having it mixed up there. This, North American raccoons are an enduringly fascinating creature. Here are some of my new favourite facts about them. The Latin name for raccoons is Procyon lotor, in which lotor means washer. And as it happens, this is quite apt because raccoons are actually known for washing their food before eating it, unlike Chainsaw Jim. This too explains why Germans don't call it a raccoon, but Ein Waschbier, literally wash bear. Raccoon paws mm. have often been compared to human hands. That is, if somebody drew human hands from memory <laughs> after, you know, four shots of tequila. Biologists <laughs> suspect that the dark mask around a raccoon's eyes work to enhance night vision by reducing glare. It's like they've never heard of infrared goggles. And outside of humans, raccoons don't face many threats. This, coupled with the fact that they're somehow just fine with American urban sprawl, means that their numbers have continued to surge. While some Good. do think of raccoons as pets, others like to label them a pest. Well, I'd like to further that anagram by saying I consider them to be a step. As in, one small step for man, one giant leap for Mario. The fantasist in me still believes that raccoons are amazing and can fly simply by thrashing around their tail. I am, however, aware that my thoughts on this might change if I ever do venture out after 8 p.m. In the meantime, I mean, it's not really as scary as I thought. I mean, I think I was mixing it up. I think there's another animal that looks like them that is more dangerous. I think so. I think so. Forgotten the name of that animal. Um, you guys can help me down in the comment. I'm, I'm sure you know the animal I'm thinking about. That one is actually a wild animal, right? Oh, I've forgotten the name of. Oh, shit. Um, so, raccoons, I mean, uh, they look like pets to me. They look like pets. Maybe there are different breeds. Maybe there are breeds that are very, very wild. But outside of the fact that they have rabies or they carry rabies, I mean, it's not really that much of a big deal. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Peace.